fearless gamers, and welcome back to another episode of The Joy of Painting Minis. And we're continuing on with Cypher here, up to episode 4. And recently what we did was is we coated his whole um, robe in um, a shade, and then we painted the gloves on his guns. Then I attached this one gun to his um, arm, as well as painted all the holsters that he has. And then I painted the um, red casing around his gun. And so now we're going to be using the following colors in this, week, in this week's episode. And let us dive right in. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to put a shade over the um, red that we painted in the last episode. So I'm going to use um, Karenberg Crimson to do this. And I'm going to be using a fine detail brush rather than the standard wash brush that I usually use because I want to be able to control this a little better um, than last time. And so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take this and I'm just going to go around the areas that are red. Like so. And... Voila. Now, one thing, I apologize for that, I just got an email about something. Um, as my usual saying, one thing, um, what, what, um, what you'll probably notice in a lot of, um, days during this, um, during the holiday month, um, because this episode's probably going to be going up in January, is... You'll notice that throughout the year, the amount of activity on the YouTube channel and um, at least my activity on the YouTube channel, the Facebook and all that, varies amongst the year. And that primarily has to do with the time of season. During the holiday Christmas time, um, where I work, I get um, a whole bunch of hours. Um, because of the increased traffic at the shop, whereas throughout the rest of the year, I get practically nothing. It's amazing that I'm able to pay any bills. So that's why, if you're ever wondering, you know, why is it that during um, December-ish, November time, the kind of traffic, sorry, um, I'm talking over that, kind of traffic um, on the channel decreases and then jumps back in during the January excuse me, January months, and then skyrockets over in the summer around, like, the, um, April-ish, um, May-ish time from then. That's mainly because of just the number of, um, it's a season change. It affects, um, my schedules a lot. And so now that we have that done, I'm going to then go on and paint the metal of the bolter, bolt pistol, going to call it a bolter lot, and I'm going to be using um, my metal color, which is um, Lead Belcher, and I use this because originally this was the, um, this was called Bolt Gun, and I was very big on using Bolt Gun to paint all bolters because it's got bolt in its name, so it naturally should be the color. So we're going to put, water this down a little bit. And then we're going to start painting the bits of the gun. So we're going to do the clip there. Little mechanism here. And we're going to leave that chain alone along with the skull. Because we want that to stand out. And I'm kind of doing some horrible things to this really nice fine detail brush that I have just because it, the, the, the project demands it, but I know that I'm treating this brush with more disrespect than I should be for this project. And as you can see, now that I'm painting this, um, the bolt, the bolter, or bolt pistol a little more, you see that I actually drilled out the hole. And you'll notice also that it's uneven. That's because of the way the mold was casted. It wasn't an, it wasn't even. So I had to sit there and slowly drill it out and slowly dis guide the bit so that it would hit that uneven hole. That way 
it wasn't like there was a hole and then there was a spot where it clearly should have gone through and it just looks like I'm so it looks you know it's uneven but to make it even would make it look worse type of situation and that's just the nature of the fact that GW should have in my opinion if they were going to make I know they wanted to like keep it a um, su surprise that Cypher was coming so you know to drop him off the site a couple of days beforehand would have gotten everyone wondering but I think what they should have done is make a new mold when Chaos came out with their Kodaks but then took him off the site. That way it goes, oh, Cypher is no longer available on the site. Ah, uh, oh, well, he's not in the Chaos Codex, so maybe he's coming out on the Dark Angel Codex, and then he doesn't, and it's like, oh, you know, well, okay, so he's gone. And then, Christmas Day, you release the Cypher um, data slate, and then also put up on the site, right there, Don't no pre-orders or anything, just... Or if you want to, you know, then a pre-order for Cypher shows up as well. Then it's like, you know, a double Christmas gift. You know, hey guys, here's a day of slate for Cypher, and hey, new model! And I think that would have gone over really well. And then wouldn't have to deal with, um, painting this up. Like, honestly, I bought this model before the advent calendar thing came out, because I was just like, you know what? He's not in the new codexes. They're probably m might be getting rid of his model, so I think I'll get. I think I'll buy it before it becomes. Yes, yeah, let me paint my clean my brush here. I'll get it before it's too late. So that's what I did, and it ended up that it was worth it. And if I wasn't, I was probably going to paint him up like this, and then run him as a chaos um, sergeant because there was a way to get a chaos um, commander to have the pistol and all that, and I'll just go with Cypher with, um, no rules. Or actually, no, I think I wrote my own six ed rules for him, taking off of the old original White Dwarf, um, release of him. And I was just gonna run with that if people wanted, and if not, just, um, use regular, um, rules for a, um, sergeant. Or a, not a sergeant, a, um, chosen or something to count him in there. So now I am going to shade that, um, well, actually, no, before I do that, I'm going to get my, um, I'm going to paint the skull on top of this, and I'm going to first paint it with, um, some bro a bronze color. That way, it is a little bit, that way it sticks out from the, um, piece. In fact, I'm actually going to do... Uh, yeah, I'll paint the skull here a brass color. Oops, sorry. Again, I do apologize every time I take the model off camera. So we're just going to paint up the skull. Leaving the eyes and teeth exposed. And I just realized I didn't paint that whole side of that bolter. Bolt pistol. So, once I finish up this skull here, we will go back and fix that. So, little skull there. And then I'm actually going to paint this on a little plaque that's along the side of his bolter. And then, is there any other piece? And part of my phone, I'm using it as a timer, and I'm getting um, text messages as I go. And then I'm going to paint that skull that's actually right here on the front. I'm going to paint that this um, brass section. Or bronze, sorry, because I think I'm using... Yep, I'm using an old paint for this one, so um, you may want to consider... Like, with this, though, most of the paints that I have are the generic colors that GW has, so if you can 
So I think they still have the um, conversion chart on the um, site. So you could easily figure out, um, get the new paint color that um, replaced the um, bronze color that I'm using. Okay, so I painted that up, then going to go back and correct that mistake that I made with missing that whole section of the bolt pistol there. Hey, hey, I didn't call it a bolter. And fix that up real nice. That way I can go on to the next part. So, oh, there was a skull there, so I'll have to fix that. Oh, I missed a lot on this guy. Okay, so now I got that part of the bolt pistol done. Let me now patch up, clean up that, up, touch up that skull that I missed. Now, one thing that I'm very curious about... Is that a skull? One second. No, it's just part of the bolter. It happens to look like a something. Is the fluff piece where it says he disguised... He impersonated a, um... A, um... An inquisitor. And I'm just sitting there going, how did he do that exactly? Wouldn't... Like, don't... Wouldn't they have noticed... That it's not the same dude? Like, how did he get away with that? Like, did he just happen to find the one Inquisitor no one's ever seen? And so he was able to get away with it? Like, that's something I always wondered. Like, how he pulled that off. And so I'm taking my, um, tin bits here. I'm painting up this chain. Okay, dokey. So, got that. Is there any fancy thing on there? No, there is not. So, with that done, then going to shade the bolt pistol with for the metal pieces on it. Um, so, we're going to dive into. Let's see, where did I put it? Ah, going to get some null oil. And I'm getting really low on this stuff. I should buy some more. And then coat all of the metal bits that I just did in the null oil. This again is great. It makes the um it makes for an easy shade um system. That way, you know, you could do in two you know, instead of you know, 20,000 steps, you know, oh, lightly shade this, lightly shade that. It just comes out real quick. One, two. Like, because right now I'm up to, for at least the pistol piece, once this is dried, it's practically done. I just have to do some, some quick edge highlighting, and my bolt pistol is done, which is great. Um, is it going to win any golden demons? No. But, at the very least, I'll have a great looking model that you could pick up and it'll look good. And at the three foot rule, as um, Phil likes to say, it is, it passes the three foot test. And for him, that's good enough. For me, as much as the three foot rule is good, I like to have 
I like my model to paint to pass the pick it up and look at it um, distance. So there we go. So while that shade is drying, I'm going to take a quick peek around it and we are going to do some little touch-ups around the um, the bolter here. Um, normally, the bolt pistol, the red casing, normally at this stage I would then start painting it on blood red and then do a highlight of orange. But because I want to keep this like this old ancient look, I'm gonna then go back over the original with the original red that we used to originally um, paint the casing and go over the area again, keeping in mind shadow pieces, the little bits where shadows would form. So I'm going to avoid like the bottom of the gun here, part of the skull around the um around really close to the um bolts I'm just like really just tapping areas of it that I want to just not be too dark I want the I want it to be a little bit lighter now cuz the wash did darken it quite a bit and I just want to help it stick out a little bit more and again, we avoid some of the areas that are hugging um, joint pieces, um, pieces that are pointing down because I'm going to make like the, I kind of do a universal, the, sh the lights coming from above type effect. I don't do full on object source lighting, so I use it just as a golden rule. So, like, there. there. Then, right here. And then one more bit right up top of the bridge here. Because I probably ruined half the paint up there. No, no. Not at all. And then. There I ruined a bit of the paint job on the skull. Okay, so now that's done, going to go with a highlight, and I'm not going to do much, I'm just going to do a simple edge highlight on the um, model, and then um, and just do little dabs on the rivets on the thing. So we're going to take our highlight, which is going to be a very light red, um, blood red, the original blood red which I don't like there's like two color there's one color that GW says is the blood red um the blood red um equivalent and it's not there's another color that I think matches it a little better same with like um like they said um corn red is is a good is equivalent to scab red and wasdock red is the supplement is the replacement for um for red gore, and it's really not true. Um, I I find that, um, and I've actually tested it, um, that corn red is a better red gore than wasdaka. Wasdaka, I don't even know. Like that, that's come. I don't know what they're thinking that that is a supplement color, because I have to 
full on disagree with that. And maybe we're gonna do some edging here just to help make the curves pop and give it a 3D look. And again, because this is a really tiny, tiny model, or at least a tiny bit here, I don't do a full on edge highlight like I normally do, like say the um, the power armor where I go over all the lines and such. I do like very minimalistic because I find that too much on the um, too much edge highlighting on a small bit looks overdone and ends up not looking really good in my opinion so I feel when it comes to like these small like the bolt pistols and the bolters and such that I find I feel less is more so I only do like little tiny corners and just enough to draw to help the eye draw the shape of the gun. Okay. And so now this piece is now the gun is the red casings finished. So all we have left to do is some highlighting on the bolt pistol and then the skulls. When we are running out of time, so I'm only going to highlight the um the bolt gun, the lead breaker, belcher um, piece using chain mail because it's still good. So we're gonna take our highlighted silvery color and again, just gonna find small bits of the gun to highlight to help dress up. this piece a little bit so not too much just enough to show the edges of the piece I apologize. It's a good thing that this episode is coming to close because my battery is about to die on the camera. So I should go and get it charged. And then we're just going to do that little circle that all these bolter, bolts, bolter class um, guns have. A little line dab right in there. And right there, and two more streaks going along the sides of this rail here. And there we have it. The bolter, or bolt gun, sorry, bolt pistol, is officially done. So we're gonna clean off the brush, get this guy ready, and then we will be back next week. So thank you all for watching, and until next time, fearless gamers, this is Matt the Vet saying, take care. Mm -hmm.